better than myself to make a thumbnail. Oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> Today. Hey guys, Tina here and welcome to another video. Today I'm filming my mid-year book freakouts tag that was created by Chami and Ellie and I will leave their information down below for you. Uh, but yeah, half of the year has gone by. I'm not sure when but it did or almost did and uh, I find myself Filming this on a terrible day. It's raining like crazy outside. It's really dark, so I have to use artificial light, and this is gonna look like crap, I think. Or maybe that's just because I feel like that. So yeah, that might be also it. But anyways, uh, I just wanted to film this tag. Last year, I sort of didn't do it. I just uh, started my booktube channel, and for some reason, I decided not to do it. But this year, I feel like I should. And it's a fun tag and I have a bunch of books that I want to show you and talk about. And uh, let's get to the questions because otherwise I'm going to be here forever. And well, you won't because you don't have to, but I have to. <laughs> if I want to film this, and shut up, Tina. Anyways, let's get to the questions. Question number one is, uh, best book you've read so far this year? Uh, I think that anyone who has watched my channel recently will know that my favorite book this year is Blood Song by Anthony Ryan. This is book one in his Raven Shadow trilogy, and I love this book to bits. I, I cannot recommend it more, <laughs> so in case you haven't read it yet and you are into fantasy, go pick it up at some point. I don't think you will regret it, honestly, but yeah, it's I just love it so much. Question number two is best sequel you read so far this year. Now, actually, a few sequels stay with me uh, this year. Uh, the first one is Truthwitch by Susan Dennard. Then I read also Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. And, uh, of course, Aka War by Sarah J. Mass. And uh, lastly, you know, the last sequel that I read was actually Lord of Shadows, and I love this one as well. But the one that really stayed with me and really surprised me, actually, is A Golden Sun by Piers Brown. And I was reading the Red Rising trilogy with Haley from Haley Reads. And after we read uh, the first book, Red Rising, I really liked it. I didn't love it. I thought it was good. But then we picked this one up, and it just blew me away. It was so fantastic, and I really... I was really surprised by how much I liked it, and that's why it's, you know, the pick for this question. And question number three is a uh, new release you haven't read yet but want to. Now, the thing is, I'm not really in a reading mood right now, so this is really hard for me to answer because nothing really appeals to me right now. But just to answer it, despite that, uh, there are a few books that I'm looking forward to. The first one is Soul of the World by David Meeling, which is a new release. I'm not even sure if it has been released officially yet. I'm not sure Book Depository has sent it to me, so it's about to arrive any day now. And so the other book that I was really excited about a few months back, but of course haven't gotten around to reading it yet, is Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames. Uh, this is also a debut novel. And it's a fantasy book about a band of mercenaries that are sort of middle-aged and out of the business, but they have to get together uh, to help a friend or something like that. Anyways, um, people that read it seem to really like it, so I'm looking forward to it eventually, as always. Question number four is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. Now, <laughs> who can guess that one? But uh, naturally, it's Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. I actually cannot wait to get my hands on that book. Uh, I also think that I will be rereading the first two books in the series before then. So yeah, I'm, I'm really just so excited. I feel like I want to reread all the books this year. I just don't feel like reading new ones, but I would reread everything. Just why? I don't know. But... Stormlight Archive is one series that I will definitely get to again this year. Question number five is a biggest disappointment, and for this I will have to go with The Edge of Everything by Jeff Giles. I heard the author talk about it and he made it sound so good, so maybe it was actually my expectations that were too high. Uh, but yeah, it was just underdeveloped, I think. Uh, I think there's a lot of potential in this world, uh, but it was disappointing as far as I'm concerned. Um, I think that other people might really like it, but sadly I'm not one of them. Question number six is the biggest surprise, and for this one I'll have to go with Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. I... It's silly for me to be surprised by this book because it was so hyped and so popular. And uh, yeah, despite that, you know, I'm slightly 
And certainly when it comes to uh, uh, overhyped books, simply because uh, a lot of the times they do disappoint. But this one didn't. I loved it. I read it with Haley again, and we both loved it. And we cannot wait for the sequel to come out. And the other book that really surprised me in a good way, because I didn't personally expect to like it so much, is Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. Uh, it's a Pulitzer Prize winner, so it's bound to be good, but you know, I'm not really one for literary fiction, so I was really pleasantly surprised and I do recommend that book to everyone. Question number seven is favorite new author, and again I will have to mention Anthony Ryan because I just fell in love with his writing and his characters and his stories and I think I will probably pick up everything that he writes in the future. Question number eight is newest fictional crush. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you, but I don't actually do that. I don't get fictional crushes. Um, I mean, yes, there are characters that I like, like Resand and Sam from the Troubleshooters by Suzanne Brockman, but uh, yeah, the, not really. <laughs> I would not call them crushes anyways, but yeah. Question number nine is a favorite new character. I actually fell in love with Kit and Ty in Lord of Shadows. Wait, where is it? Uh, I should hold the book up while I'm talking about it. Anyways, uh, Kid and Ty are definitely my favorite characters in this book or in this series. They're just so fantastic. I love their, you know, conversations, the way they are together, and I just love everything about them. And I'm looking forward to reading more about them soonish, <laughs> because it's not going to be soon, but soonish sounds just sort of right. Good question number 10 is book that made you cry. Uh, you know what, actually I cry a lot when reading, so it's... I could pick basically any book that I read this year, but one that was really sad was actually The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This was my first time reading the book and... Uh, yeah, it was sad. Also, I could mention again The Underground Railroad, that one was sad again. Um, but I'm pretty emotional, so uh, crying is not a problem for me. So I can, you know, I, there's happy tears, there's sad tears, there's tears all around. So, uh, yeah, pick any of these books that I've talked about, and I've probably cried with it. Question number 11 is book that made you happy. And those are rarer, surprisingly, <laughs> than the ones that made me cry. And one of those that I read this year is actually To All the Boys I've Loved Before by uh, Jenny Han. Now, um, well, I do, you know, admit that this is like not the best trilogy out there, but it was really enjoyable for me. And uh, this book, the first one in the series, actually was my favorite and the most enjoyable of the lot. Uh, I just really liked the conversations between Lara Jean and Peter. I thought those dialogues were hilarious sometimes. And also, um, you know, the little sister, the kitty, she's just hilarious. Also, the book that sort of made me cry, uh, not cry, uh, smile a lot or laugh out loud actually was Never Night by J. Kristoff. I should mention that again, but I'm not going to pick it up. It's under a pile of books already. Um, yeah, that was surprisingly hilarious. At least the beginning part was. And I didn't expect that. And I was just really pleasantly surprised by that. Question number 12 is uh, favorite book to film adaptation that you saw this year and sadly I have to admit that I haven't seen any yet and uh, I'm just not really big on movies anymore. I just, I don't know. Uh, TV uh, is slightly more my jam and I do have some books that I have to read so I could watch the TV adaptations of those books but so far I have failed miserably on that front as well. So this question will have to remain unanswered. Although, I just answered it quite elaborately with... Forget about it. Question number 13 is favorite review that you've done this year. And again, I will have to go with Anthony Ryan's Blood Song. I really love that review, maybe because it was so easy to do because I'm in love with that book. And uh, I will link it up above so you can go see it. It's not spoilery, so even if you, you know, have not read the book, you can check it out and... Uh, Decide to pick the book up. <laughs> I'm just gonna promote this book, like, really. That's all I do anyways. Question number 14 is the most beautiful book you've uh, bought or received this year, and uh, I have a few, so you know, because I couldn't just pick one, uh, so there's a few books, a few options here. The first one is The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. I love this cover. It's just perfect for a fantasy book. Then we have, of course, another fantasy book, A Ship of Magic by Robin Hopp. I just love these covers. They're so beautiful. Uh, Wind Witch by Susan Dennard. I love this cover as well. I don't know. I just love the autumn feel to it. All the leaves and all that. It's gorgeous. Um, 
Akawar by Sarah Germas, and this is my favorite. Well, maybe Akum F is beautiful too with the blue, but I like this one as well. Uh, Lord of Shadows, of course, by Cassandra Clare. And maybe what are the most beautiful covers, if I had to choose, is A Winter Song by um, S.J. Jones. I love this cover, it's so gorgeous. And um, because I'm a sucker for white covers, it's Our Dark Duet by V. Schwab. And of course, all of Sebastian de Castell's books have beautiful covers, and this is the first one in his uh, series. So yeah, um, they're all beautiful, with a lot of details, you know, actually these coats, beautiful covers. Mm. A lot of options. And question number 15 is, what book needs to be read before the end of the year? Uh, there's quite a few actually that I would like to read, but I have decided to go with a trilogy and it's the Potter Made Trilogy by Brian McClellan. I have owned it for a while and I have actually started it at some point, but then put it down for some reason. Uh, but this year it is my goal to read as many completed trilogies and series that I own and this is definitely um, one of those. And I'm really looking forward to it actually at some point uh, this year. Um, you know, I, it has intrigued me and I do want to get to it. So that's it for this tag. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know down in the comments if you are freaking out yet because half of the year has just gone by and now we have only six more months to finish all our goals. Uh, do let me know down if you're freaking out already. And thank you for watching this video and see you in my next one. Bye!